So this problem says, imagine Inc. is thinking about investing in a new project. The project requires an initial outlay of $750,000 and will last for five years. The project will provide cash flows at the end of each year of $10,000, $15,000, $16,000, $18,000, and $22,000. Additionally, the liquidation value of the project's assets is a million dollars. This means liquidation value. This means we can sell the assets of the project once we're done using them. You might remember that this is a pro this is a problem that we've worked in a previous chapter. The required rate of return for the firm is seven percent should the firm take the project. So the questions from chapter nine are always going to have two parts. The first part is what is the decision, right? What is the decision rule? In this case, we're asking for the net present value. Right? And the net present value is the sum of the present values of the future cash flows. Minus the initial cost of the project. second question is always going to be, once we know the decision rule, once we know the response to the decision rule, do we take the project or not? And the MPV rule says, take any project where the MPV is greater than zero. So what remains for us to do is to calculate the present value of each of the future cash flows, and then subtract the initial cost. Now, in this first example, I'll do it by hand, but in future examples, we'll just use the calculator. Right? So if I write out my timeline of the cash flows, we have a project that's going to last for five years and then finish. The initial cost occurs in year zero, and uh, we treat that as a negative because cost is a cash outflow. Then the project brings in positive cash flows. And remember that these positive cash flows, these are the free cash flows or the cash flows from assets that the firm or the project is generating in each year. And in the first year, it's 10,000 and then 15,000 and then 16,000, 18,000 and 22,000 in year four. I mean, in year five. Finally, the firm will sell all of the assets in year five, collect a million dollars in liquidation value, so that the total cash flow in year five will be a million twenty-two thousand. Now I can take the present values of these future cash flows, one, two, three, four, five. I can do that by hand. Present value of the first cash flow is equal to the future value of that first cash flow divided by one plus the discount rate raised to the number of periods. So here that'd be 10,000 divided by one plus a discount rate of 7% raised to the one because we're one year out from time period zero. Alternatively, I could just use the calculator just like any other present value of a simple sum where the future value is $10,000. My N is one year. My IY is the discount rate, which is 7% per year. And I compute my present value and I get 9,345.71. And you can check that both of these should give the same answer. I need to do this for every single one of the remaining future cash flows. So the present value of the second cash flow, which has a future value of 15,000. An N in this case of two, this one will have, this cash will have an N of two, this cash will have an N of three, this cash will have an N of four and five. Right? N is simply how long from time period zero we are. IY is the discount rate, 7% per year. And we compute the present value of the second cash flow and get $13,101.60. Let's 
Likewise, I can take the present value of the third cash flow, which has a future value of $16,000. Present value of that cash flow is $13,060.76. The present value of the fourth cash flow, whose future value is 18,000, is 13,732.11. And the present value of the fifth cash flow, and here the fifth cash flow includes both sources of cash flow that occur in the fifth year. $22,000, which is the cash flow from assets from the project, plus we sell the assets for a million dollars. Because they occur in the same year, I can just add them up and consider them as one single sum. So here I would have a future value of a million twenty-two thousand, an in of five years, an IY of seven percent. If I compute my present value here, I get seven hundred and twenty-eight thousand six hundred and seventy-one dollars and eighty-eight cents. And you can check that if you do this problem twice, in other words, if I do a problem that has a future value of a million, an N of five, and a future value of 22,000 with an N of five, add them together, you'll get this number. So net present value is the sum of the present value of the future cash flows. And that means to get the sum, we've got to add all the present values together. So the total present value of the future cash flows is $777,912 and some change. MPV is the sum of the present values, 777,912, minus the initial cost. And the initial cost here is $750,000. So the net present value for this project is 27,912. So that's step one. What is the net present value? Step two is, do we take the project? And we take any project with a net present value greater than zero. That's the net present value rule. So in this case, we take the project. Now, we can also solve this problem using the calculator. And using the financial calculator, what we do is use the cash flow environment on the financial calculator. In the graphing calculator, you'll have to use the MPV function in the finance apps section and I provided instructions on the on as you learn for that in the finance calculator we're going to use the cash flow environment and the cash flow environment is here right next to the second button cash flow net present value internal rate of return and the cash flow environment allows us to input a series of cash flows including a negative cost and then in one step take the net present value, which means in the first in the calculator we'll do internally, take the present values, add them all together, the future cash flows, subtract the cost, and give you the MPV. And you can see that here. To get into the cash flow environment, press cash flow. And you'll notice that I've got a value stored here from a previously worked problem. And just like the other environments in the calculator, the values stored are going to need to be cleared in a specific way. The way to clear the values in the cash flow environment is with second and the clear work button. So press second and then the clear button and notice above it it says clear work. The first thing you'll see is CF0 and CF0 stands for the initial cash flow. This is the initial cost of the project. And the initial cost of the project is 750000 Remember the cash the, the, the calculator requires cash flows to be put in in accounting terms. So we need to put a cash outflow for a cost, and that means we need to make it a negative. So 750,000, then a negative, and I set that value with the enter. Right. Notice, just like in all the other environments, you can see where the calculator will tell you the buttons that you need to press to move around within the calculator inside of the environment. So to set values, I need to press enter. To move up and down or to move around, I need to press the up and down arrows. So I enter my initial cash flow, and I press down. 
The next thing I see is C01. C01 is the first cash flow. That's the first cash flow for the project. Here, $10,000. And this is going to be a cash inflow, so this is a positive value. So I leave it as a positive and I press enter. Pressing the down arrow moves me to the next value, and the next value says F01, where F01 stands for the frequency of the first cash flow. And here, the frequency of the first cash flow is 1, because frequency just means how many times does that cash flow repeat in a row. And you'll notice for this problem, the cash flows never repeat, so the frequency will always be left at the default and will always be 1. And so we don't have to do anything here. We just leave it as it is and we press down to get to the next cash flow input, C02, where C02 is 15,000. That's the second cash flow. And I set that value with enter. Again, I leave the frequency at the default value because this cash flow doesn't repeat. And I can enter my third cash flow, C03, which is 16,000. I can press down and leave the frequency the same to get to C04, which is the fourth cash flow, which is $18,000. I set that value with the enter button. I move down, I leave the frequency at one. The fifth cash flow is the final cash flow for the problem. That's here, a million, 22,000. And I set that value with the enter button. Now, in these problems inside the cash flow environment, as soon as you've entered the final cash flow, and that by I mean I press enter on the final cash flow, you can stop. And you can move directly to solving for net present value or internal rate of return. Here we want to solve for net present value, so I press the MPV button and I see I equals. I is your IY, this is your discount rate for the problem, and the discount rate here is the required rate of return, 7%. Just like in the rest of the calculator functions, I need to enter this as a whole number. I need to enter a percent, not a decimal. So I enter 7, and I press down, and I see net present value, MPV equals 0. This is where I solve, and notice that now it tells me to compute. I can press compute and get $27,912.13. Again, a positive net present value, and so we accept the project. If you're using the graphing calculator, you'll need to use the MPV function and it acts in much the same way, with a few less steps. And again, there are instructions for that both online, if you Google it, or on the As You Learn page.